The video is going to show the usage of the SAML token support that comes as part of WebSphere version 707. We're going to start with demonstrating a simple application that starts with a form login servlet, which gets logged into, and then the service client on the server side is going to issue a downstream request to a service provider itself. I'm also going to instrument the service client to service provider with a TCP IP monitor so we can monitor the SOAP traffic itself. If I go to the admin console and look under service providers, I'll have an echo service which provides the service, and then I will have a service client which will call the echo service itself. If I go to the site, I will log on to the JAXWS web service SAML echo example. I'll log in as user1, and I will issue a message to the service provider. I will change the service URL to point to the TCP IP monitor so we can monitor the traffic. If I look at the TCP monitor, I will see that the message that I issued was sent in the SOAP body, right, wrapped in the actual XML message itself. I next want to extend this example with an LTPA token. If I take a look at the LTPA policy sets, there is an LTPA policy that specifies WS security. If I look at the main policy, the key aspects are I will send a timestamp in the security header so I could monitor when the message was issued, and I will look in the request message LTPA token policy, and I will specify the usage of an LTPA token to be sent. I now want to attach that policy set to my service client. I will bring up the echo service client and attach a client policy set for LTPA to that service client. I also want to assign a binding to that policy set, so I'll pick that same echo service client and specify my client bindings to attach to that echo service itself. I want to do the same thing for the service provider also. So I'll pick the service provider, pick the echo service, and attach the same LTPA policy set to that service provider. I'll need to assign a binding to that echo service itself. I will use my provider sample assert as the binding. Going back to the sample application, I will send another message to be issued. Looking at the TCP IP monitor, I will see that the SOAP message now includes an additional header, a WS security header, which includes a timestamp of when the message was sent, and a binary security token which specifies that it is an LTPA version 2 type token. So I have now propagated the identity of the user downstream to the service provider. Getting to the main part of the demonstration, I want to demonstrate the usage of attaching SAML token support to my service providers. The first thing I need to do is establish trust between the service client and service provider. That's typically done by having the service client give its public key to the service provider in that we're going to use that key to validate the signature and use the signature to establish the trust relationship. I'm going to add a little bit extra trust and in our global security setting under federated repository I want to configure the name of the issuer that I actually trust. So if I then go into trusted authentication realm inbound I'm going to see that I've specified that I want to trust tokens issued from WebSphere Server 01. Now that I have that established I want to attach the SAML token policy sets to the echo service itself. So we'll detach the LTPA policy sets. And then we will attach the SAML tool beer policy set that we are actually going to use. I need to assign a binding, so I will use the same my client bindings for that client to attach. Now that I've done the client, I will go back through with the service provider and attach the SAML tool bearer policy set to the echo service there also. I will now assign a binding to the echo service and again we'll use the my provider sample assert binding.
Now before we go any further, let's take a look at what the sample policy sets look like for this, for this example. Opening up the sample tool, beer policy set, I'll see that I've configured WS Security. Now for this sample, I would typically send the sample token over SSL, but since we want to see the message that gets issued, we'll just send it in the clear. Looking at the main policy, you'll see it looks very similar to LTPA. We'll send the timestamp in the security header. And then the request token policies, you'll see that I've extending the custom token support that we have. And in that token support, we are going to specify a local part which specifies to use the SAML version 2 tokens. If I were to look at my bindings for this, starting with the client side bindings, looking under the WS security settings. Under authentication and protection, you'll see that there are two types of tokens that I can send, SAML 2.0 and LTPA token. Looking at the SAML 2.0 token that we're sending, the first thing to notice is it also uses the extension for the custom token type for the SAML 2.0 tokens, and it uses a WSS generate SAML jazz login module. And looking at, at the callback handler, you'll see some additional information which specifies that the confirmation method I want to use for SAML is going to be a bearer token with a key type of the bearer token URL for that key type. Looking at the server-side bindings, Again, both SAML 2.0 and LTPA token. Looking at the SAML 2.0, it uses the WSS Consume SAML Jazz Login Module. And in its callback handler, there are a few more parameters that get specified. The signature required name value pair states that I want to validate the signature of the SAML token itself. This protects against anybody modifying it along the way. It then specifies a trust door path, which specifies the path to the trust door containing the public key that I'm going to use and the password to that trust door itself. Lastly, there's a trusted issuer, which is WebSphere Server 01, which was that same trust relationship that I've set up in the past. Now the question is, on the client side, where does that configuration specify? In WebSphere, we offer two locations for that information to be specified. It could be in the cell, or it could be associated with each of the individual servers. For this example, we're going to associate with the cell. And if you look under the profile, cells, cell name, there's a directory called STS. And in the STS directory, there's a SAML issuer config file. If I were to look at the file, you'll see a set of name value pair properties that are used by the client side to issue the SAML token itself, including the path of the key store, how long you want the SAML token to exist, etc., etc., etc. This is the information I'm going to be using in this example myself. Now that we've set up the sample, let's go ahead and issue the sample itself, issue the message itself so we can actually see it in action. We'll send another message. And looking at the TCP IP monitor, you will see that there is now a WS security header which uses a SAML token. And if you look at the SAML token itself, it will specify the SAML issuer is WebSphere Server 01, which is now trusted on, on the service provider itself. And if you look at the name that's specified in the subject of the SAML token, it states user1, which was the user ID that we actually logged on to. Now, in this TCP monitor application, we have the ability to modify and resend the example. So let's see what happens if somebody modifies the example, changes the user to, let's say, user3, and then reissues the request. If you see in the example, you will see that WebSphere has failed the request with an invalid security token failure as it no longer passes the signature test. 